Assassin's Creed Shadows' dev time is even longer than the massive AC Valaha. Assassin's Creed Valaha. As Ubisoft wants the RPG's depiction of Japan to be, quote, as authentic as possible. Two things on this. Number one, it is true that it's been a very, very long dev cycle. Very, very long. That's why a lot of expectations are, are quite high because this is the team that did Odyssey. And with that game, they had what? That game came out 2018, Syndicate, their last game came out 2015. So they had three years to put Odyssey together and that game was massive. This time around, they've had four years. That's a, that's a lot of time. So they've been putting a lot of time into it, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of money. So people have really high expectations. But Ubisoft keeps trying to pivot and frame this as needing time to make sure that the depiction of Japan is as authentic as possible. And this is like the, the butting heads thing of the marketing cycle, because on the one hand, they don't want you to take it super seriously. They want you to be like, yeah, it's, it's fictional, which is why we're doing everything with Yasuke and kind of fudging the historical record. But then they say stuff like this and they're like, well, it's actually because we want it to be really, really authentic. I'm like, but like not that authentic clearly. So it's just, it's weird to me that they keep going back on like how they want to frame it. But they say Ubisoft says the way for AC Shadows was longer than Valhalla because the game, the team gave itself the time to iterate and ensure an accurate depiction of feudal Japan. At three years, AC Valhalla was one of the biggest games in terms of development time, but Shadows has outgrown that by a full year. Speaking to Games Industry Up is, Carl Onier explains that you could put together an Assassin's Creed game quicker than the team managed to do with Shadows, but that wouldn't necessarily lead to a great game. It's always a balance between time and costs, but the more time you have, the more you can iterate, he says. Yes, you can put more people on a project and do it in a shorter time, but it doesn't give you more time to iterate because it takes time to get the feedback from your players, your team, and then see what works and what doesn't and how to improve it. Four years, I think, is the right balance to go from con uh, conception to production and get the full or get the feedback necessary to adapt. This makes me wonder if this is the new internal time frame they're shooting for. They're just going to start doing four year dev cycles on everything, which does seem to be about right because the team that did Valhalla is now working on Hexe and that's probably 2026. And that means by the time they finished full support for Valhalla, they will have been working on it for like three to four years. So lines up. Another reason for AC Shadows' lengthier development is the team's desire to create a game that is uh, that is as, quote, authentic, end quote, as possible. Ubisoft's depiction of Japan has, whoops, that's weird. It refreshed. Wait, did it go to a different, it did go to a different page. Oh, that's funny. It went to another, <laughs> it went to another story. Did I actually click on something? How did I even do that? I think I actually clicked on this. That's funny. Okay. That's, that's funny because we've already talked about this article. Okay, anyway, they wanted it to be as authentic as possible. Ubisoft's depiction of Japan has long been a talking point with the studio recently apologizing for promotional material that's caused concern within the Japanese community, end quote. Speaking about the team's efforts to achieve authentic representation, though, Anya says the team or says it's a matter of pride for the team, and also it's a very long process to get it right. When we build a Japanese house from feudal Japan, it's very different from, say, a French medieval house or an English one, he says. So you have to learn as an artist where things go inside a feudal Japanese house. Maybe the food doesn't go there. You have to get everything you need to know and learn it. And that process is long. It's not feudal Japan, obviously, but it is good to go on site because it is only then that we realize it is very different to what we think it is. It is very interesting because the team went there. One of those things that jumped out was the forests and how they are. We had made some forests based on the Greece landscape for Odyssey, but when we went, we noticed it was very different to what we've done and we had to change it. You won't necessarily find that stuff out when doing historical research. These are some of the small things that are very important because you get to, or because you get a better sense of the dimensions of the building, of the culture, of the monuments and shrines still standing today. It's very important to represent all of that correctly, which I can appreciate the desire to get forests accurate, to get dimensions of houses and the placements of food and all that. I, I can understand why they'd want to push that. But I just think right now there are two kind of conflicting narratives with Shadows, and that is both that they want it to be treated as a fantasy game, not fantasy, as a fictional game, kind of historical fiction. And then they also want it to be looked at as a historical game that takes a lot of the nuance into consideration, where they're they're really paying attention to all those little details. And I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. But I think that like 
because there are two conflicting narratives going on with the game at the same time, you're going to end up with some confusion from the fan base. So I would say, let's just unify it. If you want to double down on the historical accuracy, maybe it is that like, yeah, we, the game is really authentic to Japan and to the setting and time period. We did a lot of work on that. Yes, Yasuke, we kind of fudged the historical record a good bit, but we think the game is still going to be fun. Bada bing, bada boom. That's fine. A lot of people are still going to throw fits about it. That's going to happen regardless. They probably weren't going to buy the game anyways. So you're probably not losing out on many sales. But as long as you're able to like form a consistent narrative, at least that we can work with that. But right now it just feels like they, they don't really know how to juggle it. And I get the sense that there's a little bit of chaos going on within the marketing teams because they're trying to figure out how to deal with it. Because on the one hand, they have the core fan base, which is just like, like go over to a, a Jor Raptor video. Jor Raptor's community is very, very Assassin's Creed focused. And they're like, yeah, looks good. The game looks really solid. There's a couple things I might point out, but they're just generally excited to get a new Assassin's Creed game. But then you go over to somebody like Asmongold and then he'll make a video talking about AC Shadows. And you would think that this game is like developed by Satan himself. Like it's unbelievable. It's crazy, like how bad it is. And it's, they should be canceled. And they should be ashamed of themselves, blah, blah, blah. And as with most things, the truth and where most people, the average gamer probably lands is somewhere in the middle. I think some gamers on the more casual side of things are going to be like, cool, it's a new Assassin's Creed game. I haven't played one since lockdown. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Mirage was fine, but it wasn't like a full game. So I'm excited to try this one. And then other people are going to look at it and be like, well, it's like, it's a little weird that it's a game set in feudal Japan and I'm, I'm playing a black character as a samurai. I don't know how that makes sense. That's a little odd. And maybe that prevents them from picking up the box and buying it. Maybe it doesn't affect it at all. Maybe they still do buy it. We just don't know yet. But I think right now Ubisoft knows that that's still up in the air and they're trying to figure out which narrative to deal with or how, or if they should just ignore it, you know, because I don't think they, I don't think they figured it out yet. I think they're still trying to, to figure out which path to take but they certainly are taking a lot more time with the game and i think that gets some people excited that they are really giving it time to cook and to to hopefully end up really solid but they also are setting expectations with that dev cycle and i think people are going to expect the game to be really huge to have a ton of content and hopefully they can deliver on that have they shown any of the rpg-ness of this game uh no i mean as of right now they haven't they've basically shown two paths to take on taking out a, an assassination target within the castle and that's about it they will eventually show a lot more i i'm certain of it but i think they're just waiting for star wars outlaws to be out the door i would guess within like a week or two of star wars outlaws releasing i would guess they start to go ham on the, the marketing cycle for this that's my guess I think they just don't want to step on each other's toes, which makes sense. I mean, they, they shouldn't. He took my thing.